I'm delighted to introduce Khalid, who has become a good friend over the last several months. And I've invited him here to basically tell his story, which is fascinating and an important story that needs to get out. And I'm going to hand over to Khalid and let him tell you his, his fascinating story about how he managed to cure himself for from diabetes after 10 years. Khalid, yes. I'm delighted to you and thank thanks you. very much coming back from your ski trip. <laughs> so I'm thank really you, I'm really happy to see you here and I think for everyone I think just in your own words tell us a little bit about what actually happened. Yes. Um, I know things started just before Ramadan last year yes. but what actually happened? You had diabetes for, yes. for ten a years. while. Ten years. Okay. So, ten years ago, I was not feeling well. I went to a doctor who properly diagnosed it, textbook style. I did all of the tests and everything, and he says, you're uh, diabetic. You're type 2 diabetic, and you need to start with the type 2 diabetes uh, medicine. And, of course, because you're diabetic, we need to control your cholesterol, and I went on cholesterol medicine also. Uh, over the years, I heard about low-carb diet and the, the, the cure to diabetes. I talked to my doctor at the time. I bought him the books, uh, uh, all of the uh, nice books that we know about uh, low carbs now. And I told him, Doc, can you look at these books, please? He said, okay, I will look at it, but your results are okay. You don't need to change anything. Ten years down the road, I am not feeling well. My results are extremely terrible. I've been very careful with what I eat. Your hemoglobin A1C was quite high, it over was, 11 or it something. It was 11, yes. Yeah. Uh, 11.8 yeah. approximately. 11.8. So yeah. when I saw those results, I knew that something is wrong and I need to do something about it. So I started going back to these old books and I discovered Jason, Dr. Jason Fung in one of these books. Yeah, he's one of my favorite guys. Yes. So, and, so and his, his... Was that the diabetes... Uh, is that the diabetes uh, code or, or the ob obesity, ob obesity code? Obesity and code. And the diabetes okay. code. Okay. So I got the audiobooks versions of the books and I started listening to them and watching his videos on YouTube and watching interviews that he made and many other uh, people who are really aware of this problem and how to fix it and all of them repeated the same thing diabetes is a metabolic disease it's not terminal and by changing your way of life and the food that you eat you can resolve it so i started on that two weeks before ramadan i started low carb i started shopping with the food i started measuring my uh, blood sugar i heard about um, keto testers so i ordered one online from the u.s and it took around two weeks to get there. By then, Ramadan started, and in Ramadan, I started with intermittent fasting, where I was doing a dry fast, as normally in Ramadan. I will break my fast with a low-carb meal, one meal, and then I will be on a wet fast till the, uh, the sun rises, where I stop drinking water. And I continued for one month. And for the first time in 10 years, in Ramadan, after breaking the fast, I am not uh, sleepy, I am not tired. In fact, I was full of energy. I started playing golf uh, every, like three or four times a week in Ramadan. I was playing golf, I met some new friends. I didn't know how to play golf before. I started playing golf. It was a fabulous experience. So within 30 days, really, with Ramadan, yes. I mean, after Ramadan, you were feeling better than you had felt for maybe years and years. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah. My brain started to, f I, I used to ask my doctor, I feel like there's a cloud on my thinking and things mm. are not clear. I can't remember things properly. Mm. His answer was, you're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. it's very interesting yeah. that by eating the right foods and, yeah. and excluding the carbs and reducing my insulin yeah. level, how my body started yeah. functioning properly again. Absolutely. And obviously not too much after that, I know you met Dr. Sefdalina yes, yes. and then obviously myself. Yes. And, but I mean, 
Dr. Sefton and Lena and I, we'd like to take credit for this, but I must say we can't take much credit. Yes. We just sort of encouraged you to stay yes. on the diet and yes. things, yes. but you really had the recipe figured out yourself, yes. which is fantastic. And I think that's the exciting thing and why I'm delighted you're here, because I think this message needs to get out to a lot of people that look, with a few simple lifestyle changes, mainly the keto diet yes. and some intermittent fasting, you can cure your diabetes. And as you know from the Verta study in yes. San Francisco, you know that was the first proof of, of some substantial proof that a keto diet, and they did not do intermittent fasting yes. by the way, but they had fantastic success, nearly 65% of their people. And many of them actually reversed their diabetes, as you know, within weeks. Yes. And so this is a, this is hope for many yes. of these poor diabetic sufferers, yes. which now, you know, half the world is fat, diabetic, and sick. So this isn't, you know, you're not the exception. I mean, you're part of a huge amount of people. But tell me, you'd also lost quite a bit of weight yes. when you went yes. on this diet. What, what actually happened there? So, uh, and I, I want to make sure everybody knows that I did not do any exercise during this period, and I lost 25 kgs. And the reason I didn't want to Within exercise... Within what, four or five months? Three months. Three months. Three months, yes. Oh my gosh. And the reason I didn't want to exercise was not that I don't believe that exercise is healthy and it makes you fit and everything. It's just that I wanted to exclude it from the equation. I just wanted to make sure that did food contribute to my weight loss or was it exercise? And it's interesting you say that because it's really in a way malpractice for doctors to say that exercise will make you lose weight. Yes. There's very little, practically no published data to show that exercise actually helps you lose weight. Yes. It does a lot of other good things, yes. as you know. It's it tones you healthy. up, it's healthy. You live longer with, yes. you know, your telomeres lengthen in your cells, helps you live an extra seven years. But absolutely, for the weight loss, it was clearly the keto diet yes. with the intermittent fasting. Yes. Now, since that time, just if you continue the story so within a few months you'd lost all this weight yes. and were you able to stop your medicines or you yes, continue yes. You i stopped? stopped my medicines one week into the process even before we started with ramadan i even was, before ramadan even you stopped before the medicine. Ramadan, yes because i was measuring my blood sugar at the beginning when it was extremely high i was continuing with the medication because i wanted it to help bring it down because the my uh, fasting blood sugar was 380. I remember you, you gave me and I saw the yes. recordings and yes. then during that month of Ramadan yes. they gradually came down to nearly yes. normal by yes. the end of Ramadan. Yes and as you saw when we did the uh, oh, the, the continuous sugar the monitor continuous sugar we sugar put monitor, on you. Yes. Yeah, it was that for me was, was eye-opener because that's something I wanted to do at the beginning to be able to document this journey but it was very nice to see it at the end of the journey, how my body now yeah. is functioning at a, I would say, perfect level with yeah. insulin and yeah. um, not affecting me in a negative yeah. way. We love that continuous sugar monitoring. And I mean, I know when we put that on, to you, on you for two weeks, yes. I mean, your sugars were all completely normal yes. without any medication. Yes. And obviously you've been feeling better than you yes, felt yes. like when you were 16 years yes, old you yes, told me yes, yes. you felt as good as that so let me ask you in terms of how difficult was it for you to transition and maintain because i think yes. since then nearly what now about eight ten months yes you've been pretty much maintaining the same yes. good weight yes no medications yes. blood sugar is perfect and i know that you must have done and your wife i know was i yes. met her she's a lovely lady that she was also somewhat helpful in terms of yes. redesigning the the everyday meals yes, that yes. you guys were yeah. having. So I think for many people, as we know, the keto is high fat, yes. moderate protein, low yes. carbs. Yes. Can you maybe suggest or say something about how you've been able to consume more healthy fats yes. and how you've been able to keep those carbs down? I would say the best thing that worked for me is to cook my own food at home. And because I was doing intermittent fasting, I got to choose when that meal was going to be. So I would start with uh, a choice of natural fats. It will either be grass-fed butter 
or it will be uh, coconut uh, oil, cold press, or a very high quality olive oil, one of these three sources. I will add that to a salad, leafy greens, okay, to, to give me the, the nutrients from the salad. I will choose um, a small portion of protein, which could either be uh, grass-fed beef, it could be eggs, um, it could be fish, and that was my main source of the meal. And it was very easy because most of these leafy greens, you can buy them ready in the supermarket. You just take it out, it's nice, it's packed, it's organic. You just wash it, put it in a bowl. Uh, it takes me literally five minutes to prepare a meal. And I do, it doesn't cost me as much as going to three meals in a restaurant every day or snacking every two hours like some doctors uh, recommend where you, their recommendation is you have to eat the whole day. That's how you not get hungry. Yeah. But guess what? I'm eating one meal a day and I'm not hungry at all. You only eat one meal a day. Yes. So at the beginning, I was focused on that because I arranged my day that at lunchtime I would be at home. So I will do my work in the morning. I will have my lunch break at home. I will just come in, open the fridge, get my salad, wash it, put it in a bowl, add my olive oil, add my apple cider vinegar, the natural type, uh, prepare my protein dish, whatever it is, either some meat in some butter. Butter is my best friend for uh, consuming more fat. Uh, right. Fat I, makes you thin. Yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, my wife always believed that you had to eat a lot of butter, a lot of fat. I always thought she was crazy <laughs> that she, she would add butter into her eggs. And uh, I was a follower of low fat, yeah, yeah. Uh, high carb, uh, whole yeah. grain. Yeah. And now after all of this experience, I know that she was right. Mm. And a funny part of the story is when I finally got the keto tester and I was testing my ketones, they were very high. My wife said, okay, test it on me. And when I tested on her, she was already in ketosis because she's been- That's why she's so nice and slim uh, yes, yes. and healthy. Yes, yeah, yeah, and yeah. she's been doing intermittent fasting by, by just feeling that she felt that she doesn't need to eat more than once a day. Yeah. We all thought she was crazy at the time yeah, yeah. when she was doing that. Yeah. But now we know that she was doing this yeah. correctly. Now, now, I know also from talking to your wife a bit, I mean, she, she does occasionally cook like some coconut flour or almond yes, flour yes, bread and yes, things. So, yes. you know, I think for a lot of people, you know, I know after talking to lots of clients, they still like, yes. you know, occasionally a piece of bread or yes. something like that. So. You, you don't buy the usual wheat type of bread. Yes. You, 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 you do your own baking. Your wife does the, some of the baking at yes, home. Yes, my wife loves experimenting with different uh, flours. Um, we got introduced to a, a new recipe with one of our friends, which was based on uh, tahini, which is uh, ground uh, sesame. It also makes an amazing bread, uh, almond flour, coconut flour. Um, and from our experience with people we've talked to, some people need bread because that's what they grew up with that's yeah. a, a, a cornerstone of what they eat right and uh, so we experiment with this at, at the beginning i was experimenting with chocolate because i loved chocolate <laughs> and i could not trust what i buy from the shelf so i started buying all of the ingredients myself and it's all available in in the supermarket even you get the the uh, natural uh, cocoa, cocoa, cocoa. cocoa. Yeah. cocoa. Yeah. you get the cacao butter, yeah. which is the white uh, uh, chocolate. Yeah. You mix them together and Good you got chocolate. chocolate. You add nuts to it. You add some flavors if you want, uh, some Himalayan salt. It gives it that kick. And suddenly we started making chocolate bars at home and the kids loved it. And they understood that uh, Chocolate can be healthy if you do it the right way. Very healthy. And uh, and so you, there's enough variety. Yes. You've never gotten bored being yes. on the keto. I mean, it, there's plenty of variety. Any food that you like or any style, I would say any kitchen that you favor, uh, whatever it is, can be changed. Tweaked. Into, it tweaked, can be tweaked, tweaked a bit. Yeah. I can, I can go to a restaurant, look at the menu and choose items that work with me. Of course, one of the key goals, since most of our diet depends on fat, we have to ensure that that source of fat is healthy. Right. And that it's not mixed in with um, 
vegetable oils, yeah, which ha- unfortunately uh, are one of the problems that people are facing, that right. they don't understand that vegetable oil is actually bad for you. And it is um, a refined uh, product. It's a processed product that actually harms you and right. cheats your body into building cells that are not really as strong as... Right. It's all that hydrogenated trans fats yes. that is very toxic. But, I mean, I presume you, you're using mostly uh, coconut oil yes. and yes. ghee and yes. butter. Butter yes. is your best friend. Ge- and ghee, of course. And ghee yes. and, and, and maybe a little bit of beef fat or something yes. like yes. that. Yes, yes, okay. yes. And, and that's what I started doing. Thank you for reminding me about the beef fat. I went to a butcher who has grass-fed uh, meat, and I asked him the question, what, because he said, ah, this is a good cut, it's low fat. I said, I want the high fat. What do you do with the fat? <laughs> He's saying, sir, we actually throw it away. I said, can I buy it from you? He says, we don't. Let me check if there is a code in the machine. And he checked. And like one kg was like for 20 dirhams. So we took that fat. We took it home. We started melting it. We started cleaning it up. And we started using it in our cooking also. And it's available for free because this mindset of low fat, low fat, is it throwing away healthy stuff that people can use to cure themselves. And I, I'm sure, Khalid, look, you're born and raised in this area. Yes. I know your father and grandfather yes. probably ate like that normally, yes. right? Yes. I mean, yes. they weren't eating a lot of processed stuff. There were no Cokes, no pizzas, exactly. none of the usual things. Exactly. And they lived long, healthy lives. Yes. Yes. Uh, wasn't your father up uh, in 90, was 90 or something? He was quite He's, an uh, old, In the 80s, I think. In the 80s. Yes. And they're still alive. Yes, yes. Healthy. Yes. yes. What I wanted to say is that the way of life in the past did not include this amount of carbs right. because carbs was a luxury. Right. Sweets were a luxury. And in our culture, we like to greet guests by stuff that they would normally not have. So in the past, our main food consumption was fish. We, we live on the seaside. We would have dried fish. We will have fresh cast fish. So fish was our main source of fat and protein. Uh, Rice was a rarity. Uh, Bread was something not available. We would get some kind of hardy grain that you had to grind yourself and you would make some dry bread. And uh, it was really not that abundance of it. Sugar was a luxury. I think I mentioned to you, you know, up here at Dubai Mall, up at the bookstore up there, I found this incredibly good book by an English photographer. Yes had taken beautiful pictures throughout the whole Gulf region, particularly in the UAE as well. And the amazing thing is when you look through the book, there's not a single fat, obese person, obese people in the whole book. In fact, many of them are standing without their shirts and they look like warriors, you know, like muscle, well muscle. Not a single fat person in the whole book. Now this was before 1960s and the oil came into the region. And I mean, since then there's been a progressive and obviously the Western diet yes. and all the soda pops and all these kind of things arrived. And obviously it, now we have a major crisis here yes. in the Middle East. Uh, 62% of the, the local population now is, is fat. Yes. And many of them, as you know, have, have diabetes. diabetes yeah. So, I mean, I think again, hearing your story to see how quickly you were able to reverse yeah. something you'd had for 10 years, going regularly to your doctor but getting the same American Diabetes Association diet advice about eating low fat and more carbs has really, we've done a huge disservice, I think, to people. So again, let me ask you, Khalid, is there anything, any parting advice you'd give to people like you perhaps once were? Any advice, simple advice you'd like to leave as, as we conclude this? I would say is there is hope. It's not the end of the road. You can be liberated from these medicines that you're taking. And these constant food cravings that you face every night, the reason you pick up the phone and order that pizza late at (laughs) night, you know, all of this can go away just by controlling your insulin levels and by stopping having those carbs that will normalize your insulin and that will normalize your cravings. Some people think it's that they don't have that willpower to control what they eat, but it's the food that they are taking in is affecting that willpower because you, it's very difficult to find those cravings. Your whole body is craving for the food. 
So by controlling what you eat and by fighting the cravings for uh, the first couple of days, you can just pass this very easily. And, and you will be ha happy, healthy, living a much longer life. Absolutely. Khalid, thanks very, very much for coming in and particularly seeing you go back <laughs> late last night. I really appreciate Thank it. And I hope this that. gets out to a lot of people so. and we can together help a lot of people reverse their, their diabetes. Thank you, Dr. Graham. Thank you for having me.